this week, no matter where you are right now, I want you to stand up on your feet and join us in some praise and worship. Come on. Your love surrounds me with no end in sight. Mercy falling if I've crossed the line. Forget chasing if the feeling's right. I'm feeling right when I'm on my knees again. All my worries have been left behind. Feeling fear won't affect my mind. No need to argue if I'm in the fight. I'm in the fight when I'm on my knees again. My heart's beating the light and so meaning my soul completing the plans that you have. My old dreams is broken with rhythm, so grace in memory life. I'll sing your praise all night, all day. I'll sing your name. This life is by design Your grace is calling, calling every time I found a reason that my soul ignites My soul ignites when I'm on my knees again My heart beating a lot And you me my soul And the set you have My old prison was broken song that says the battle belongs to our God and he's riding on the storm no matter what storms you are facing God's just chilling through them and he wants us to chill with him and trust in him and rest in him but what we can do which is so powerful is lift our voices and praise and worship and declare what he has done for us and who he is and thank him Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. How far is with weapons unseen? Your enemies crash to them. So we cry out in worship. Thank you, God. When 
shine upon you be gracious to you lord turn his face toward you and give you peace oh, amen Thank you, Lord. What an awesome God we serve. He he kite atua. He maungurunga kite whenua. He whakaro pai ki nga tangata katoa. Honor and glory to our God. On earth, good peace and good will to all people. Hallelujah. You know, this morning I want to give you encouragement. 
God is for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. What a great God we serve. We've been having a wonderful month talking about God, our provider. And Reuben's got a great message for us today, and he's going to bring it soon. And uh, before he does, I just want to pray for us all. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you that you are our God. You're our heavenly Father. You're for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Father, we thank you for the blessings that you give us every day. We thank you that we can trust in you fully. We thank you that everything to do with our lives and our families are in your hands. And so we honor you, our God. We thank you that you've given us a perfect standing in Christ, that we can take his place as you take all the negativity in our lives, everything that is not of you, and you've removed it from us. You've given us great blessing, great favor. We thank you for establishing us in righteousness in your son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we praise you, our God, as we trust in you. We say your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed today. Hi, and welcome to Excite Kids News. Host, co-host, Jeremy. Today we're talking about Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah what? <laughs> it's Jehovah Jireh. Can you please tell us what that means? That, that the Lord provides. Can you please tell us how the Lord has provided for you? Well, I have always wanted a dog and I found this dog that was up for free for a really good heart. So I asked my parents if I could have it and I prayed a lot and I mean a lot for this dog. Sadly, we didn't get this dog, but um, the next day we got a call and it was the people who sold the other dog. They said that they were drawn to us and that we could get this other dog from them that had a heart ailment. I was like, yes, please. And so a week later we went and we got this really cute black dog. And what's even better is that her heart ever went away. So now we have a completely normal dog that we got for free. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. I know, right? And what's even better is I would like to share a scripture with you about God our provider. Could you please help that? Yes. Here it is. Look at the birds of the air. They don't plant or gather crops. They don't store and put away stuff in rooms. But your Father who is in heaven feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Matthew 6, 26. Wow, now I know that the Lord is our provider. That's awesome. And I would just like to let you know that whenever you pray about something, the Lord does hear you and he will provide. Bye! Bye! <laughs>
heard where we were going and they gifted us $200 gondola and luge tickets as well, on top of that. Um, and then also within the same month, um, we were blessed with um, flights and accommodation for our whole family to go to Wellington to go to their RISE conference. So to ask for a holiday, you can understand, he literally brought heaven to earth. It was like the most incredible um, extra way of just taking care of our needs in abundance. And um, that's because, you know, being a provider isn't just what he does, but it's because it's who he is, you know. He loves us, he's such a good father and he wants to take care of us. And um, Philippians 4.19 says that the same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. You know, we're so grateful for all of the times of need because that's when we've seen miracles and our faith has grown. So now when we face a need, I get excited, you know, because we say in our family that God has been far too good to us in our past for us to doubt him even for a second with our future. Are you looking for a way to get connected? We have Life Group Zoom meetings on weekly and we would love to get to know you. Life Groups are an essential way to stay connected, get support and a place to get encouraged. If you'd like to join a Life Group, please visit our website www.excite.org.nz or email us at info at excite.org.nz. We can't wait to hear from you. As soon as we come out of lockdown level 2, we are planning a baptism service as we currently have a number of people wanting to take this important step in their walk with Christ. If you are interested in being water baptized or would like to find out more information about water baptism, email info at excite.org.nz. As followers of Christ, we are called to impact not just our local communities, but also to take the good news of the gospel worldwide. As a church, we regularly support these overseas missions the Joshua Foundation in Tanzania, and the Excite Youth Christian Centre in Bangladesh. If you'd like to find out more about these overseas missions, visit our website www.excite.org.nz. Donations toward these missions can be given into the account number shown on the screen. And in appreciation, we want to thank you for your continued support of the church. Because of you, we've been able to bless families and provide food parcels within our community. Please see our details here if you would like to give today. Next up, we have Pastor Reuben Hager speaking on God, our provider, Jehovah Jireh. Atamari e tufano. So blessed to have you here this morning for another Excite Home Church. And I am blessed and honored to be able to bring the word to you this morning. All I ask from you this morning is to be expectant, to see God move in your life, to Prepare yourself to hear the word of the Lord and uh, to just have open ears and open heart and an open mind to receive what the Lord has to speak this morning. So I'm going to open us up in a karakia and then we're going to get into God's word this morning. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you so much, Father, for everything that you have done for us. Lord, we want to open up with just giving you thanks and praise and glory and honor, Father, for everything every good thing that we know has come from above, from your hand, Lord. We thank you for your son who came here and gave his life and shed his blood so that we could enjoy perfect reconciled relationship with you. Lord, you're so good. You are so good. And your heart is to bless us. So Lord, as we delve into your word here this morning, Lord, we just pray that, uh, that this word goes out into good soil. And that these hearts are ready to hear and receive, Father. Lord, we just pray that it would move, your spirit would move, Father, and meet somebody right now where they are, where they need you most, right now in their living room, wherever they're listening to this word, Father, that you would meet them there and minister to them directly. Father, in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm really excited to share what God's got on my heart this morning, and I'm just going to get straight into it. I want to talk about Abram. I want to talk about the blessing and the covenant that God bestowed upon him and how that relates to us now in Christ. 
This also speaks of favor. And in keeping with our month's theme of God our provider, Jehovah Jireh, I want to entitle this message, The Provision of Favor. The Provision of Favor. Because I'm telling you now that you are greatly blessed and you are greatly favored as a loved son or daughter of the Most High in Christ Jesus. All right. I want to take you right now to Genesis 12. And this is through verses 1 to 3. This is where the Lord meets a 75-year-old man and calls him to come out of his home, out of his, out of his land, out of his nation, and move in a direction to a destination unknown. Just called by God to move. And a simple act of faith to get up and move and follow the call of God unlocks a blessing that you and I now enjoy to this day. This happened 430 years before the laws of Moses were written, before God gave Moses the guardianship of the law uh, to, to cover his people and to guard his people until the coming of his son. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take it back to the 75 year old man who's, who's just got a call from God To move. So in Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3, the Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. I've come to tell you here this morning that you will be blessed to be a blessing. That God has blessing stored up for you, not to stop at your gates, but to flow through you and bless many others and many generations beyond you. I love that song that the worship team was singing this morning. May his favor be upon you for a thousand generations, for your family, for your children and their children, for generations and generations and generations. I'm telling you right now that God, what he has for you right now is not just for you. It's for your kids. It's for your family. It's for your whanau. It's for your sphere of influence around you. There's blessing stored up in heaven. And it's not just to meet your need, but to meet someone else's need. You are the answer to someone's prayer. You are the blessing someone is waiting for. I'm telling you right now, this is bigger than yourself. And just as Abram experienced when he heard the voice of God tell him, move out of your father's land, go into this new place where where I will lead you. And it's not just to bless you and your immediate family, but the entire world. This is a calling that he has upon your life. Amen. If, I, if, you're not, if you're not excited by that, I'm excited for you. <laughs> I'm excited by what he's got over my life, and I'm excited for what he has over your life. I just want to read this from Psalms 90, verse 17. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The thing that Abram had that set him apart was faith. Abram trusted in God. He trusted in God more than he trusted in his own will and his own mind and his own work. And this Psalm 9017, it speaks of asking the Lord to establish the work of our hands. It's about Trusting that whatever we do, the Lord will establish it. The Lord will breathe on it. The Lord will bless others through it. It will become the Lord's work and not our own. Abram taught us about the righteousness by faith. So how does this relate to us? See, 430 years later, 
the law came in. We all know the story of how uh, the, the Israelites uh, were, were held in captivity in Egypt. And they were subjected to hard labor. They were oppressed because the Egyptians were scared of their growing numbers. And the more they were oppressed, the more they grew. And then eventually, Moses was sent and called by God to free his people. He took them from the land of Egypt. He crossed the Red Sea by part, parting it, by the power of God, parting the Red Sea. Then the Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness. They were given the laws. They were given the commandments by Moses. And then they crossed the River Jordan into the land of Canaan and they took it. This is 430 years afterwards, after this promise that's given to Abram. Now the law came to be a guardian, the word says. To be a guardian of, of God's people. To show them uh, the sin. To show them their error in their ways. To, to instruct them and to guide them. But the law was never designed for us to gain righteousness through. Because we could never do it. And God knew this. And that's why he made the promise to Abram saying that many nations will be blessed through your seed. Because he knew the plan he had, which was to bring Christ to fulfill the law for us, free us from the bondage to sin, and enable us to walk in a newness of life in God's righteousness. Not our own, not by our works, but just as Abram modeled to us, our faith. Amen? Amen. So I want to take you to Galatians. Galatians 3. And I'm going to ask you the question in Paul's words that he asked the Galatians church. Now we understand in our faith that our righteousness comes by faith. We understand that we've received that righteousness from Jesus, from, through Jesus, from God. And, and we understand that it's not our works and our trying to hammer ourselves into shape that's going to get us back into the good graces of God and unlock the blessing and the favor and the provision that God has for us. Amen? Well, the Galatian church had forgotten this. And this is Paul reminding them. So I'm reading to you out of Galatians 3 verse 2. And it says, I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or believing what you heard? I ask you now, I know the answer for me. I didn't receive the Spirit by anything that I did to gain righteousness with God. I, I received the Spirit by my faith in Christ. I received the Spirit because God freely, willingly gave it to me through the sacrifice of His Son. And that's the only way we can achieve righteousness. And that's the only way we can walk into the blessings and the provision of the Holy Spirit and the favor He has for us. Amen. It follows on in verse 3. It says, Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Friend, how many times have we we've received this righteousness and all of a sudden we read in the word all of these things that we are meant to be. We read that we are meant to no longer curse. We read that we're meant to no longer walk a certain way, talk a certain way. We'll walk into a church and because we walk and talk a certain way, we might feel ostracized. We might feel less than and we might feel that, hey, am I a Christian? Because I'm thinking these thoughts. I'm doing these things. This is not in line with how a Christian's meant to walk and talk. But friend, I'm telling you right now that your righteousness is by your faith and not by your works. And this is what the Apostle uh, Paul is saying when he says, Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Don't, don't stop continuing on in the things of the Spirit and start turning to your own work to justify yourselves. Because I'm telling you, friend, it's just like the law. We will never get there. 
we will never achieve it. There is only one man that ever could, and his name is Jesus. And it's in him that we experience the righteousness. It's through him that we can step boldly into the throne room of God. And that's the only way. It's through him that we can experience the grace and the favor of God. Amen. <laughs> yes. So I ask again. This is verse 5. Does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you by works of the law? Or by believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed in God and it was credited to him as righteousness. It's his faith. That was credited to, to him as righteousness. Not how well he behaved and how well he walked. Friend, I'm telling you, if you've got some wrinkles in your walk, praise God, he's got grace sufficient for you. Praise God that it's not you that has to change yourself and bend yourself into shape. Praise God that you can be born again by spirit and by water. Born again, that's what baptism's all about. You go down in the water, you die to your old self, you come up out of the water raised again in newness of life in Christ. And it's by faith in Him that you gain righteousness. It's by faith in Him that you gain favor. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, church, I just want to give you a little bit of a testimony of what favor means and in, in in my life i came to the lord in 2015 march the first and in 2015 march the first was the beginning of the time where i let go of all of the control of my life of everything that i knew everything i was holding on to, to so tightly my financial security my my good standing as a as a as a citizen everyone else's opinion of myself at my 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 workplace prestige who i was 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 founded in my work and what other people thought of me and then this morning this sunday the 1st of march 2015 my wife heavily pregnant up there leading worship and my i was on sound and my brother-in-law was preaching and all of a sudden he said if you want to receive the lord as your savior come up to the front and i tell you friend like i'd even that morning i said i don't want to be a christian and here i was i get up and i start walking up and and i'm trembling and i'm crying like a baby and i get up to the front there and i i give my heart to the lord and this was not the end this was not the finish line my friend but it was the start it was the beginning of something a new life where all of a sudden i wasn't living for myself but i was learning how to live for Christ. And in living for Christ, I realized I had to give up something. I had to give up my right to feel anxiety, my right to feel offense, my right as a human being to actually live for myself. Because now I was living a higher purpose and a higher calling, and I was living in favor, not just for me to be blessed, but for others to be blessed through me. And it's through that that we experience the favor of God. A few months later, in November or December, I was preaching my first sermon on obedience in our church in Sydney. And then straight after that, God called us to come back from Sydney to New Zealand, back from earning good money and being around all our Christian family over there, my wife's family, our place of comfort and our church that we knew, back home, home for me, to a place where I had never, I never lived as a Christian, and back to a place where I was going to earn less money, where it was harder to find a place to live, where it was, it was more expensive to live, and it was a huge step of faith where I had to trust God. It was like Abram, where he called him and said, go. And Abram didn't ask how, why, what, when, how, what, what are we going to do? No, he just got up and he moved. And everything that he touched was blessed. Everywhere he went, he was provided for. Friend, it was the same for me and my family. As soon as we came over here, we had a house, we had a car, we had provision. The Lord had gone before us preparing the way. And this is the favor that was on Abram's life. And this is the favor that you and I enjoy as followers of Christ. 
it says later on in Galatians that the blessing that, that, that was placed on Abraham, it was said that it was for him and his seed. And it says in Galatians that it was not just his seeds, not his descendants, but his seed, one seed, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And that same seed has been planted in you and I as we've received Jesus into our lives. So that blessing that's on Abram is now enjoyed by you and I. And this is the kind of blessing where, where Abram and Lot, his cousin, were joined together and they were getting too big for the land. Abram said to Lot, look, our shepherds are fighting. We need to split up. We need to go in different directions. Now, you choose where you want to go. And Lot looked around and he found there was some real nice land and some not so nice land. And Lot went, well, I'm going to take the good land. And Abraham said, that's fine. Because I know that wherever I walk, the blessing of God follows. I know that wherever I set my feet, I am highly favored. And that, my friend, is the kind of confidence that you can have in Christ. So I, th I feel like I'm speaking to someone right now who has a big faith step to make. That there's a decision right there in front of you. That you feel a call to step out into the unknown. That you feel an unction from God saying you need to leave everything you know right now. You need to leave the old. And that might be old mentalities, old anxieties, old, old patterns of thought. Not just physical places. I feel like I'm speaking to someone who's been stuck in an old cycle, an old pattern of thought right now. And God's saying, you need to step out of this comfortable pattern. You need to step out in faith right now and trust that you are favored. You are blessed. Read the word. Find out who I am and who you are in me and step out knowing, knowing that you know that you know that you know that you're God is a provider, and that He's got you. Friend, Abraham was blessed, and through his seed, the world would be blessed. Through his seed, through one seed, there is one way. One way, one truth, one light, and that is Jesus Christ. You can try and do things on your own strength, and friend, you can do a really good job. But you are never going to reach your full potential. You are never going to experience your fullest fulfillment without living in Christ. So I encourage you right now. If you have never known Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, it's as simple as reciting a prayer. And I would be so honored to pray that prayer with you. It says in Romans 10, 9, that all we have to do is confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that Christ, that God raised Christ from the dead and we will be saved. In doing that, we walk into a newness of life. We walk into God's blessing, God's favor, everything that he promised Abram 430 years before the law even came in. 430 years before God was pointing out the sin to people in their hearts and in their lives. Before 430 years before, before, sin, before, the, before the law came in from Moses, God promised these things that they would come through this one seed, Jesus Christ. And I would be honored to pray a prayer with you that would lead you through into that relationship with Him. See, Christianity is more than just a religion. It's more than a set of rules. Your righteousness comes from faith, not from following rules. Your righteousness comes through a relationship and believing in Christ. So pray with me now. If this is you and you want to receive Jesus into your life and walk into the blessing He has for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth and taking all of my sin and my iniquity to the cross. Lord, I turn now from my old self and into a newness of life with you. I receive you 
as my Lord and as my Savior. And I believe that God raised you up. And I am raised with you in newness of life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, friend, if you just prayed that prayer right now, I want to congratulate you on starting a new life in Christ. And I want to invite you to learn more about what that life means and how you can walk it out day by day, living more and more in the things that Christ has for you. And how we want to do that is we want you to connect with us. So pick up your phone right now if you said yes to that prayer. And I would love for you to text the word yes to the number that's down on the screen. If you do that, we will get in touch with you and we will walk with you and talk with you about the decision you've made and what it means to walk into a relationship with Christ. Thank you so much, Church Fano. It's been an absolute blessing to share with you this morning. I can't wait till we can meet together once more in the center. But for now, aren't we blessed to be able to do this? Go and have an awesome week. Be blessed. Walk in the favor that God has for you. In Jesus' name. Amen.